Hello gorgeous souls. Today's topic is going to be about ego. What is ego? And uh, we're going to do a little practical exercise as well to identify the ego within us. Okay, so we hear the term ego a lot. Um, and usually, um, majority of cases, it's got a negative connotation. So as soon as you say ego, uh, people say in defense, oh, that's not my ego. I don't have an ego. <laughs> um, the truth is we all have an ego. The ego is there in every single person. The ego is a psyche. The ego is that persona. The ego is that I, I, that experiences the outside world the three-dimensional world that I talked about in my first video. So the ego is a culmination of your thoughts, your emotions, your feelings, your system of beliefs, all your past experiences, your perceptions, your likes and dislikes, all the things that make you who you are as a person, as an identity. That's the ego. The ego is a construct of the mind. It's made up. So when we are born, we're born almost without an ego. And at the age of about three, according to yoga science, that's when the ego, the false ego starts to kick in. We start identifying with the body as though the body is the true us. It's me, this, the body, the arms, the legs, the face, the head, the, the stomach, the heart. <laughs> okay, so this is what the ego is. The ego is the aspect of us that experiences the world, that directly interacts with the world through the five senses. The five senses are there to receive data from the external world, send it inside to the mind, to the antara karana, which is the internal sensory organ. It's processed and that, uh, once it's processed, then there is an output. So that usually there's a reaction or a decision or a movement. Some sort of cause and effect takes place. And so what we do with it, that determines where we are in that measurement of ego if you like so yes the ego in a way can be measured but not the way we refer to ego as oh you know you have 100 percent ego <laughs> or you have only 10 percent ego you know in yoga science the ego is to be tamed in reference to the false ego of course not the true ego because there is a part of the ego that needs to be there for us to experience the world but the false ego is created when we identify when we miss when we overly identify with the body as the truth this in yoga science is called avidya lack of knowledge or ignorance Ahankar is the ego, it's that aspect of ourselves that we refer to as I. So when I say I, I am Heba, I am a teacher, I am, um, I have succeeded, I have all these tournaments, I've got three children, I am run this business and I'm, you know, this age or you know, my social status, my marital status, my name, my career, my achievements. That's called the ego. And false ego is when we identify with all the false things that are not the true self. Okay. Now, what is the true self? So the true self is everything that is not ego. The true self is you. The true self is that aspect of our beingness that's in the background 
that's unmanifest, that is watching, that doesn't interfere, it doesn't judge, it doesn't have a form, it doesn't have an experience, it does not experience life directly. It is that little man that's a woman that's sitting in the back and just watching all their interactions that are happening on the surface. That is what true self is. What is the nature of the true self? True self is Sat Chit Anand. It is consciousness, Chit, it is Sat, truth, and it is Anand, bliss. This is the nature of the true self. And these are the only attributes of the true self. All else is ego. Okay, so ego is a big thing. And often, more often than not, most people will identify with a false ego from the day they become aware of their lives till the day they die. Most people do not realize the true self, the nature of the true self, unfortunately. Now, some aspects of the egoic identity need to be healed because the ego is that eye construct that allows us to interact with the world. And a lot of times we wear a mask to hide some other aspects that we don't want to reveal to the outside world. So the hidden part of the ego is usually the parts that need healing. They suppressed or they kept below, kept under for a reason. We don't want to reveal them. We fear judgment. We fear that people are gonna mock us or they fear that we fear that people are gonna judge us or shun us or call us names or all of these things that come with being a part of society, a community. We fear judgment. So what we do with the traumas and the pains and the, the, the things that we go through in life that are usually unpleasant is we suppress them so that we don't have to talk about them ever again because talking about them brings pain. So in a way, we think that talking about our pain is going to multiply our pain so we hide them deep down in the dungeon in that dark dungeon that no one can access not even you when these hidden parts of the ego are suppressed for a very long time they become more than just traumas they become very self-limiting monsters they really limit limit us as human beings because as human beings we are infinite eternal souls so now you can see why traumas pains unhealed aspects of the self the ego self can really self-limit us but that's only if you don't come out of the victim mentality if you don't get insight into the true self into the egoic self and heal those parts of yourself that need healing that's when your true potential is limited so let's do a simple exercise and we're going to try and identify what the true self feels like to connect to the true self as opposed to connecting identifying with the ego we're going to try and identify with the true self now so i invite you to sit in a comfortable position preferably preferably where you're not distracted um, if that's possible if not that's okay you can just close the door and um or you can pause and do this another time so like I said, sit in a comfortable position and close your eyes. Close your eyes. We want to internalize the experience. So we want to close the eyes 
from the external world so that there's no stimulation coming from outside. Draw deep breath in from the nose or the mouth and send that breath down, down, down into the lower parts of the belly. Hold that breath in for a few seconds and slowly begin to release. With that release of air, you find yourself a, a little bit more relaxed each time. So I'm going to I'm going to ask you to invite again to breathe in again the same way you did before. All the way down. Try to go a little deeper this time and slowly hold and then release. As you release again, you're more profoundly relaxed. One more breath. This time you're going to hold the breath for about five seconds. Inhale. three, four, five, slowly, slowly, exhale, and release. Very good. Now you feel still and profoundly relaxed. Are you feeling now the breath automatic? It's happening. You are not doing it. Feel your eyes softening, the skin on your face soft, smooth. Your body is completely relaxed. Now I want you to visualize yourself standing up, getting out of your seat or your chair, walking towards the door, and walking outside to your backyard. And in that backyard, there's a little inviting, warm space that you've created, a consecrated space. and a tent. And I want you to give that tent any colors that resonate with your soul, any colors that you are drawn to. And I want you to slowly, slowly, with my guidance, walk towards the tent, stand outside the door of that tent. Beautiful sunny day, Lovely breeze, you can feel it on your skin. Now I want you to start taking off your shoes. Before you enter the tent, I will let you know when to enter. I want you to take your shoes off. I want you to remove any clothing that you're wearing. And put that on the inner bucket on the left side. I want you to remove any pieces of jewellery that you're wearing. Also put that on the, in the bucket on the left side. There's another bucket on the right side and in that one, I want you to put your name, strip yourself of your name, your full name, put that in the bucket. I want you to strip yourself of your date of birth and put that in the bucket. I want you to remove any titles that you've been given or that you've given yourself, whether that's related to your profession or anything else, parent, cook, daughter, sister, husband, wife, any labels 
that you've given yourself or that you've been given I want you to remove that strip yourself of these titles and labels and dump them in that bucket on the right side see that bucket slowly slowly fill up there's a lot of titles and there's a lot of labels that we're given take your time with this one I want you now to strip yourself, yourself of any medals put that in the bucket any trophies any certificates of achievements any forms of recognition I want you to strip yourself of these and put them in the bucket on the right side. And feel how that burden comes off as soon as you dump it all in these buckets. Now I want you to remove your job title and also dump that in the bucket. Now I want you to identify some of your traits. If you can, all of your traits, please go ahead. But if, if not, the main traits. I want you to think about what you, what words you use when you say, I am what dot, 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 dot. I am angry, I'm depressed, I am whatever that may be that adjective that you ascribe to yourself i want you to strip yourself of these adjectives and chuck all these in that bin on the right side see how it fills up real quick okay Now I want you to come back to your emotions and feelings. Delve deep into your emotional body. And also do the same thing. Strip yourselves of any emotions that you feel and put them in the bucket. Okay, now you've removed almost everything. <laughs> What's left? See, you still exist. Now I want you in your raw form to step into the tent. Take that first step into the tent. Go deep into the tent. Find the spot that calls out to you. In the tent and sit down now that you've left everything outside the tent what you have left is you in your raw form you without any labels you without any judgments you without any forms of identification you without the ego this is the pure you that you are experiencing I want you to connect to your heart space let that feeling arise from the heart space what is left of me you ask I removed everything and yet here I am, I'm still here, I'm still conscious, I'm still aware. It's almost like you walked into an empty vast space, there is nothing there but you, emptiness. Feel that emptiness, feel it. Connect with it. 
Don't try to fill that void with things. Don't try to fill it with names and adjectives and forms of identification, perceptions, imagination, past, future. Be in the now. Be in that space of complete silence and stillness. The now. The breath is involuntary. The breath is happening there automatically in the background. So you don't need to manipulate the breath. You only need to be present in that space of complete silence and stillness. And you may start to feel like you are witnessing yourself from the inside. There's a part of you, that aspect of you, that is witnessing the you that you thought was you. Let the breath come and go. Don't try and change it. Let it happen. And you may start to experience an arising feeling of joy and bliss. As you anchor yourself deeply in that space of silence. In yoga science, we call this Chit Anand, Sat Chit Anand, Truth Consciousness Bliss. This is the nature of the true self. This is a self beyond all identifications, beyond perceptions, beyond experiences. This is your true nature. This is who you are. As you can see, you're able to drop the ego and go within and connect with your true self. The true self does not demand anything. It does not need anything. It is self-fulfilled. And it only becomes realized in a state of complete silence, not when the mind's busy and disturbed. If you would like to stay longer, you can pause right now. And now take that deep breath in and slowly start to become aware of your environment, of yourself. Slowly stand up and walk out of the tent. Now you can start to retrieve all the items you put in the right bucket and the left. Put your clothes back on, your shoes, wear your identity. And now you can slowly bring yourself back to awakening consciousness. Okay. Well, that was a simple exercise to help you become aware of your true essential nature. We need not seek our true eternal nature on the outside in outer consciousness. It is a matter of reversing our perspective, changing our perspective from outer to inner to find and realize the true self. Hope you found this video helpful. I will see you again in the next one. Namaste.